If your dad decided to be a world-killing eco-terrorist, what would you do? World destroyers don't have to come in the guise of a giant alien ship in the sky or ancient gods rising from their underworld prison. The tiniest of creatures can kill us too. And with the Arctic ice melting faster every single day, who knows what sort of prehistoric terrors are just biding their time until they can finish us off. This field station was supposed to be a chill experience for these post-grad students. Just a chance to study the receding glacier ice and impress their professor, but he has other plans. I'm going to break down the mistakes made. What you should do is how to beat the parasitic world killer in The Thaw. In a nearly five minute long series of opening credits that would put the chaos in 28 days later to shame, we hear a message that has been drilled into our brains to the point of desensitization in the 15 years since this movie came out. Global warming will be the death of the human race. Seas will flood. Fires will spread spread, famines will kill, and so will desperate soldiers working for governments trying to hide the truth from us and secure ever-dwindling resources. Also, a plague has ravaged the world. In the Canadian Arctic, Dr. David Krupin and his team are observing the effects of global warming in real time by tranquilizing starving polar bears and examining preserved mammoth remains that have been hidden in glacier ice for millennia. He makes plans for three of his graduate students, Adam, Frederico, and Ling to join him as well as his estranged daughter, Evelyn. But two days before they're supposed to arrive, the polar bear they caught dies suddenly. Their Inuit region guide, Nutty, and his colleague, Jane, get violently sick. They're also forced to kill the camp's dog and seal it in plastic. David calls the local helicopter pilot, Bart, and asks him not to bring his daughter to their base camp when she arrives. The graduate students are expendable, though. When Jane asks David if he canceled their trip, he lies and says he did. He also lies, saying he called for help. Of course, because dear old dad didn't say why he doesn't want Evelyn not to come. She refuses to stay put, forcing herself into the last spot in the chopper. When Bart and the students arrive, Arrive, they find the Kuan Set hut facilities seemingly abandoned, without fuel or heat. Deeper in, they find a completely unlocked and unquarantined lab with a rotting polar bear in it, which they immediately touch. <coughs> Something just bit me. The human paradox captured in 10 seconds of film. The science student dismisses it as just a flea bite. Sure, and the Black Death was just a cold. It goes without saying that this lab should be hermetically sealed with neon yellow caution tape in a big sign that says, you will die if you touch this bear. And none of these students should be here anyway, since David could have easily told Bart not to bring anyone. That everyone in the facility is sick and the trip is canceled. That's the obvious minus one step here for anyone who isn't a sociopath. Instead, Evelyn radios for her dad and gets Jane, telling her they've arrived and are wondering where her dad and the team are. Jane confronts David immediately and he lies again, assuring her he told the kids not to come, but she doesn't buy it this time. And when she overhears them talking about next steps in an ominous whisper, she defends herself by pulling out their hunting rifle and using it on her colleagues. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't kill someone I suspected was plotting to murder me. However, since we've got a gun on David, I might say way to take and ask some questions first. Night falls. Bart's bug bite has become an open wound, and Jane returns from the distant field station just long enough to crawl into the helicopter and collapse. Ling suddenly screams, merging from her room covered in bug bites, and Federico freaks as something crawls up his pants. Evelyn radios for her dad and receives no response. They all collectively agree to leave Jane behind and return to town in the chopper for help, only to find Jane has destroyed the helicopter's controls. Bart says it's fixable with time, just as Jane suddenly begins choking on her own weird brown sludge and dies. She can't breathe! Just stay with me, please! No, 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 no! I wouldn't do that, no. Anyone wanna, oh, I don't know, roll her onto her side so she doesn't asphyxiate. Of course, Evelyn immediately lunges to give Jane mouth to mouth. It's as admirable as it is gross. I know I would not be leaping at the chance to lip lock that thing. You, come here, breathe into his mouth. <clears throat> 
college student Federico tells him they need to seal off the room to prevent the spread of Jane's illness. And I can't help but wondering why the PhD scientist running this camp never did the same thing for the plague bear. Sealing this room wouldn't be all that difficult with basic supplies. Plastic along the edges of all windows and doors, taped, then weighed down just to make sure. Not only does creating this seal help mitigate spread to some extent, it also basically creates a terrarium where you could watch the progress of the species while waiting for the CDC to show up. For all we know, this thing has the 24-hour lifespan of a mayfly, which is important information to know when calculating incubation periods. Now, we never see Evelyn wash her hands after wiping brown gunge off Jane, so I'm just gonna assume every time she touches her face from now on, she's giving herself an apocalyptic dirty Sanchez. She and Adam immediately speed off in the ATV to search for David. They reach the field station and discover the woolly mammoth carcass is riddled with what they think are still viable bug eggs that are thawing as the summer temps thaw their host. They discover Edward's body, then find a fresh grave. Adam pulls Evelyn away before she can dig up the body, leaving her to assume it belongs to David. Back at camp, things take a turn for the worse. Bart starts fixing the chopper and discovers his bug bite has developed herpes. Of course, he doesn't tell anyone, because that's how the world will actually end. Not with a bang, but with people pretending they don't have the plague. Federico starts dummy thick blood, and Ling displays the symptoms of every disease known to man simultaneously. We can't really assess Ling or Federico's condition without medical expertise, but the bug bite on Bart's arm is interesting because it partially resembles the wounds caused by bot flies, a terrible nightmare for anyone with trypophobia. Bot flies lay their eggs in certain insects, like mosquitoes, which accidentally transfer those eggs to humans when drinking our blood, sensing the warmth in our skin the eggs hatch and burrow into our flesh, remaining there for up to 18 weeks before crawling out and dropping to the soil to pupate. In some places, people just have to wait for the larvae to leave, but medical treatments exist to treat them too. Larvae are typically suffocated by smearing Vaseline, beeswax, fingernail polish, and even pork fat across the openings of its burrow. This forces the larvae to seek air by rising to the surface, at which point it can be pulled out. One study even found that applying raw meat to the wound for several hours can lure them into migrating, as if the meat is a new host. It's all very disturbing. This field office probably doesn't have much fresh meat, although maybe it does. What it definitely has is some sort of thick, viscous substance they could use to wrap across this wound. In a pinch, even oil from the chopper would deplete the oxygen fast enough to kill off anything living in the wound. Or simply fill a bucket with water and submerge the wound for hours, depleting the oxygen that way. Either way, you want to do this before the animal starts carving tunnels through your flesh. Evelyn and Adam arrive back to find Ling Sh a brick in the bathroom. You caked in so many bug bites and sweat that she looks like she took a medieval assignment too literally. Evelyn tells them they need to examine Jane and discover eggs growing and hatching in her body. Evelyn then tells the others that Jane has become a breeding ground for prehistoric parasitic disease spreading bugs. So of course, once they wrap Jane's body in sheet and move her to the lab, Evelyn immediately touches the plague bear with ungloved hands. God. Federico enters, telling them he's called a rescue chopper that'll reach them in a few hours, but Evelyn says they can't leave. She tells them they have to call off the chopper and call the CDC, that they'll need to be quarantined until the risk of spread is neutralized. Federico doesn't like this idea. When she runs for the radio room, he picks up the gun, kicks the door open, and destroys it. Then he declares himself in charge that they'll be leaving when the chopper arrives. And his timing is impeccable as Ling staggers into view and begins her exorcist reenactment. She's infected. They 1% effort, seal her in a room, only to get called back to the lab, where they see Jane's body squirming with parasites. 
Bart heads to the kitchen for a knife and decides his only chance is to remove the bugs from his arm before they can spread. At first, he tries slicing, but stops when he sees a bug digging around in his flesh like a mole in dirt. So he grabs a butcher's cleaver to lop the whole thing off, without a tourniquet, anything to cauterize the wound, or pain meds. Evelyn convinces him to let them prep for battlefield surgery at least, and finds morphine in a first aid kit. They tie a tourniquet with what I hope isn't gauze and sterilize the edge of the blade. They're about to hack away at his arm when Federico discovers his manhood's turning uh, goo gooey and raises the gun at them. Shut up! <laughs> And the gauze tourniquet was garbage, like I suspected. Bart begins to bleed out immediately. Evelyn tries to staunch the blood flow with towels while Adam burns the arm to kill the bugs. Federico says he could go into shock, so they move Bart to the couch and wrap the wound in the amount of gauze you'd use on a scraped knee. Then they just leave him there and forget about him for a while. Yeah, I'm gonna try the oil or water or Vaseline options first, I think. And if we're going to attempt an amputation, remember, that the entire point is to limit blood supply to the limb, which means applying a tight band and leaving it in place even after the limb is gone. Evelyn discovers her dad's journal nearby. In a couple of days, two weeks max, since the discovery of the tainted mammoth, David learned enough to practically write the book on these bugs, which aren't actually insects at all. They're vertebrae. The journal says the males only dig into the flesh so the females can lay eggs there, and it's the eggs that cause the sickness, which is impossible to know without extensive testing and retesting in a facility with better equipment than this chop shop. For all they know, the deadly piece is some bacterial or viral strain, or the actual organism that sickens humans needs to use these creatures as carriers to infect us. Evelyn rigs the type of PPE you'd wear going skiing during the Canadian springtime. She arms herself with a makeshift flamethrower and enters the lab to kind of just wander around for 20 seconds. She pulls back the sheet on Jane to discover the bugs have skeletonized her and are doing the same to the bear. Evelyn escapes the rooms as the bugs go into attack mode and she's saved by Adam half a second from disaster when one of the bugs reaches her skin. Get it out! <laughs> Then, Federico makes her strip bare so Adam can check her out more. I mean, with that world-class PPE you devised, I don't see how they could have ever breached it. A few minutes later, the rest of the parasites eat their way through the bear, turning the lab into a hive of disease. <laughs> They turn Ling into a walking buffet next, and Federico, in all his panicked wisdom, shoots her when she threatens to reveal that he's infested too. Them too. Which only unleashes the bugs fully into the facility. Also, they discover Bart's impromptu amputation did jack all. Bart does the thing everyone should have done five million minutes ago and clocks Federico across the face. <laughs> He then accepts his fate, dosing himself and Ling with a lethal amount of morphine, while Evelyn and Adam run away. But because none of these idiots grabbed Federico's weapon while he was down, he follows them outside, prepared to kill them to keep his contagion hidden and secure his spot on the rescue chopper. Soon as the helicopter gets here, she's gonna blow the whistle on me. Suddenly, Federico's shot from behind by David, who's crawled out of nowhere. They tell him everything, that Jane sabotaged the chopper, that they're going to burn down the facility, that a rescue team is coming. He reassures them he's not infected, which they don't confirm, and tells them where to find gas so that they can torch the place. But Evelyn realizes that he's too nonchalant about all this. She goes to double check his lab files just in case, watching a video of David taking credit for letting this parasitic species loose on humanity to curb our numbers and save the planet before he cuts into his own arm and voluntarily lets a parasite in. David admits his plans and tells them that when the rescue team arrives, he's leaving alone to spread the contagion further. He locks them inside the hut and rushes out to meet the chopper. Luckily for Adam and Evelyn, nobody in this movie knows how to do anything well. They find a not even heavy box and smash out a window, freeing them from the station. As the chopper takes off, 
Adam latches onto the landing skids and tries to warn them that David is infected, but they can't hear him over the blades. David scares the pilots with threats that letting Adam in will infect them, while looking like a chest burster is about to break out of him at any minute. That or he ate too much Taco Bell. When he can't hold on any longer, Adam falls, crashing to the ground. Devlin picks up Federico's gun, firing wildly until she shoots the pilot in the throat, bringing the whole thing down in a blazing inferno. With his dying breath, Adam tells her to get her dad's notes to the world so they can prepare. Or, or, how about you go set fire to that mammoth carcass while you're here and save everyone the trouble? Luckily, the notes were already outside when the building burned, so she's left to sit in the helicopter for several days until another rescue team comes to check why the first hasn't returned yet. In the end, Evelyn returns to the world as an eco-warrior. Somewhere else in the States, a dog bites into a disgusting rotting bird that carried the infected vertebrae out of ground zero anyway. Look, we've all played the video game Plague Inc. And if you haven't, I'm revoking your nerd card temporarily until you do. We all know illnesses are not a single threat, but a cluster of them working in tandem to knock out our defenses and take us down. Stopping this threat begins with David's team. Proper PPE and quarantine for the diseased tissues and patients, and a call to the CDC. They could have collected samples and, in a pinch, hauled snow over from a nearby area to recover the mammoth and force the vertebrae into dormancy again until additional resources could arrive for containment. Even if David wouldn't call the CDC, Jane would. Which makes me wonder why she didn't make the call over the radio when she realized how sick she was. Once we arrive and realize how bad it is, we need to take a moment to assess. We need to quietly tally how many of us are sick and collect weapons before disseminating any information to anyone. None of us could have known Federico would destroy the radio, but we all know that humans are dumb. Panicky animals that don't want to be the one that's quarantined. Once he's destroyed the radio, it's time to have Adam distract him. Then, take Bart out to the helicopter to fix that radio and call out. And if Ed Rico interferes, hit him over the back of the head and tie him up. That is a far teamer crime than shooting the throat out of a helicopter pilot and killing our dad in a fiery crash. Surviving the plague is possible. The real threat is human moral flexibility. And I know as well as anybody, there's no cure for that. But this scenario can be handled without anyone save the original infected dying. For those reasons, I think the thaw was beaten. Moral of the story, don't touch dead infected things without PPE.